Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Mighty Morphin Power Rangers video, and I'm very excited because finally, I'm getting to check out two new figures from the Super 7 MMPR Ultimates Wave 2 line, the Red Ranger, Jason and or Rocky, and Dora Sphinx, aka King Sphinx for all you Zoo Ranger fans out there. Now, the Red Ranger packaging is a giant green box, electrical this all over with the Red Ranger Power Coin and on the backside, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger logo action. It's a slipcase cover. You pull it off and you get to see everything that the Red Ranger comes with. A lot of accessories in this box. That's nice to see, especially at the $55 price point. Do keep that in mind. On the backside, we have the Red Ranger and we got a little bit of a write-up. So if you want to learn about Jason Lee Scott. Now... A little bit bigger box for King Sphinx. He's a monster. Expect a little bit more heft to this guy. But I gotta say, he looks pretty darn cool. And I'm very happy to have this version of King Sphinx because I'm a huge fan of King Sphinx. One of my favorite monsters growing up from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. On the back side, you get the same deal and a little bit of a write-up on this Egyptian-themed monster, even though he's a little bit cooler, in Zoo Ranger. Now... Just as a heads up, before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of an idea of what I work with, in my mind, with Power Rangers. It's goofy, it's campy, it's the monster of the week. I loved Rita, I loved Goldar, I loved all her cavalcade of monsters, and how she tormented the Rangers week in and week out, along with Zordon, and of course, Alpha. That being said, I love the idea of good versus evil, People in monster costumes fighting people in ranger costumes. It had it all, right? Pumpkin wrappers. That was amazing. You had skeleton monsters. That's even more amazing. The goofy campiness is what Power Rangers is to me. Unfortunately, though, I largely fell off with the movie. I thought that that went a little bit too far. Although I did like the suits because they better match the Bandai figures that were put out at the time. And no, I'm not a fan of the overly serious Power Rangers. I think it's kind of dumb, to be honest with you. It's supposed to be lighthearted, goofy, zany, crazy. You can have a little bit of drama to things. But not that much. I don't want to see characters dying like that, to be honest with you. The Mighty Morphin Power Ranger reboot was interesting. Very Iron Man-ish, we'll just say. However, I really did like what they did with the Netflix special, Once and Always. And that, to me, was the perfect mashup of the goofy campiness the age of the Rangers at this point, if we're using the same actors, and then having to deal with the real-world deaths of the actors. It was a beautiful special, and I hope to see more of that. And as I've gotten older, I've quickly realized Bulk and Skull are, in fact, the best characters in all of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. Make sure all your footage is edited together in a comprehensive manner. This is a look at two new Super 7 MMPR Ultimates, Jason slash Rocky the Red Ranger and King Sphinx. And while I got all you Dora monsters here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube videos. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. We have old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. And if you stay tuned through the episode, I'll tell you how you can get 10% off your orders at Entertainment Earth and free shipping, which is where I picked mine up. Now, if it wasn't clearly evident by the title card, this is going to be based on a pressing engagement. One of my favorite episodes of MMPR because it had King Sphinx in it. So here's everything out of the packaging. You get a ton with the Red Ranger and you get a huge monster figure, which is beautifully painted with King Sphinx. And speaking of which, let's talk about the hands. You get multiple hands. Some of the hands are going to kind of look the same. It's all about the peg joints. Some move up and down. Some move left and right. However, with the hands that hold the weapons, you're going to have to either heat them up or just slowly insert the weapon because it's a tight grip. He also has fisted hands as well for punching the Power Rangers. Now, I do like that you get an extra head portraits, which again, 
is beautifully painted. It has lovely line work all over it. The headdress, the Egyptian headdress, is very cool. Now mine has a little bit of a tiny smudge right there on his upper lip. Hopefully Finster's got something that can help him with that. But other than that, yeah, it's really nicely done. And same thing with his weapon accessory. And like I said, because it has such a tight grip, I had to heat up the hand and then I'm just gonna keep this hand on this weapon. There, that's how he's gonna be displayed and that's uh, totally fine with me. The weapon itself is largely blue with a little bit of yellow, but it is painted nice for what it is. And King Sphinx, man oh man, does that look good. And you're gonna say that again when I show you other iterations of King Sphinx later in the episode. This looks like a man in a suit. The shading is perfect. If you look at King Sphinx, the character, the costume from the show, this figure has brought out details to me I didn't even know existed. And when you look at the different head portraits, because of the animatronics in the mouth, I'm glad they included it because you got one open mouth, one closed mouth, so that's cool. But everything else here is so dang good looking. Down to the hieroglyphics, everything is painted beautifully from his shoulder pads to the Nintendo graphics right there on his pecs and the eyeball and everything else. It's just very well done. And on top of everything, to me, it looks like you have recreated the man in the suit. It's a monster, but it has a squishiness to it. Even down to the feet, right? Beautifully painted toenails, peg holes on the bottom, the calves, everything just looks good. And that is really something because I had to go back and watch the episode because I never noticed the wings. Super 7 taught me something. I don't remember seeing this, but it is there when you watch the episode. It's those quick cuts from Power Rangers when they edited everything. You don't get to see a whole heck of a lot. It's just flashy, flashy, kids, attention to detail, yada, yada. That's what they did back in the day. But he has some nice articulation in the wings. They will go up, they will go down, and they will pivot back. That's it. Speaking of which, on the back side of the wings, it has this really nice red spray paint feature, which again, when you watch the episode, if you freeze frame it, you can see that it totally has that. However, in Super 7 fashion, unfortunately, when you start moving things around, things, joints, that kind of deal, they get loose, and the wings are unfortunately no exception, as you can clearly see. When they go up, they go down, they look good, but when you start to move him, you get a little droopy. And that, to me, is a big problem. I have pointed out in looking at, across the board, TMNT Ultimates, Transformers Ultimates, everything. Every single Super 7 line seems to have abnormally loose joints for a new action figure. 30 years from now, yeah, of course. But not something as you pull it straight out of the box. The headdress articulation for the head. It'll get hit on the shoulders a little bit. You're not going to get too much out of it but that's fine the monsters don't really move around too much with their head so that's fine with me the arms the shoulder pads will work with you he has bicep swivel he has single jointed elbows i'm not a huge stickler for articulation but people have pointed out you could pull the arms the arms do come out but i really had to pull the arm out i'm just going to point that out it wasn't something that they just fell out like some people have told me you really got to yank the arms out. So didn't find too much of a problem there. The wrists, the hands, those are all fine, right? It's really the abdomen crunch that is the loose joint. Along with the one wing, you got a loose abdomen. And because of the wings, they can make him kind of back heavy. That makes it even looser, right? So he'll fall back and take everything with him. So again... That is something that Super 7 really has to work on, is loose joints. Everything else, from the accessories, at least for King Sphinx, to the paint, to the articulation, is fine for me in what I look for for action figures. I want attention to detail. I want things to look like what they look like, even though I never noticed that he doesn't have pants on, so thanks for pointing that out. Super 7, he does have some tail articulation as well. But that is definitely a King Sphinx butt right there. Man, is it molded. <laughs> Anyways, the King Sphinx monster is really darn cool. Did Super 7 make a really darn cool action figure? Yes. Does he have some loose joints? Yes, but overall, it's a positive angle 
for the MMPR line. Now, in looking at the Red Ranger, that's a whole heck of a lot of accessories, right? That's nice to see for the price points. Some hiccups. Now, I do like that they included these hands. That's cool. I do like they included these hands. That's cool as well, right? You need some weapon holding hands, but more on that in just a few because you get other weapon holding hands, which are a little bit of a lighter now grip, right? Which no, we need tighter if anything. And then you have gun trigger finger hands, right? Or are they calling the Megazord type hands, which I would have liked to have seen a more outstretched hand. With all the hands present, you would think that that would be something that they would add. Now, right here, just to show you, the hands, being that these are the two grippiest hands, right? And then I noticed that some of the wrists get loose again once you start moving them around. The blaster on the other side with this hand with the trigger finger doesn't hold it at all. This with the blade blaster gun doesn't really hold it natural, nor does this one. So here's the big problem with these hands. You get a lot of hands, but the hands don't work with what you want to use these weapons for, right? So that's a problem. Now, when it comes to the power sword, which is really nicely done, right? That looks great, beautifully painted, lovely sculpts to it, no problems. But when it comes to holding the sword, yeah, that works just fine. However, I would love to see molded weapons into molded hands. That to me looks a lot better. You do get two head portraits for the unmasked versions of let's say Jason, right? Now, I'm gonna tell you that first and foremost, this head does not work. It is way too big for this body. And from the original renders, it went a little bit more cartoonified, right? Which I don't have a problem with, but the head is entirely too big. Even in juxtaposition to the Rocky head portrait, right? Which for the most part, both of them are decently painted. They're not the greatest all the time, but not huge hiccups here and there. Rocky's though fits a whole heck of a lot better, even though for me, Jason is always the Red Ranger. Will I be using these head portraits? No. Do I like displaying Power Rangers with unmasked heads? No. It's not fun. That's something for the show. For me, Power Rangers with the helmets on, right? Now he does have the Red Ranger crystal, and that comes from the episode of Pressing Engagement, even though in that episode, Red Ranger is the only one that doesn't do the crystal activation, yet he has it because of the Zeo Ranger footage. Don't worry about it, looks good. Now, you get the Power Morpher. And to me, that is very cool. That's a nice accessory. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, he's already morphed. What's the point of that? Who cares? It's cool. It comes with a Power Morpher. I don't remember having this as a kid. None of the Rangers had Power Morphers. So I definitely dig it. Now, you do get the Blade Blaster. It comes as a gun, it has Power Rangers inscribed right there. Definitely dig that. And it is painted beautifully. But like I already pointed out, doesn't really fit in his hands. It does fit into the holster though, so I definitely dig that. You also get the other versions, right? Power down mode, sword mode, each of those are painted beautifully, and it also says Power Rangers on both, which, hey, that's a nice touch, nice and small, and if you're wondering, yes, it fits beautifully into the holster, either or. Now, this is my favorite because I grew up with the flip head Power Rangers, right? Those were my favorite. They still are my favorite. But you get the old fashioned Bandai weapons with the hole, which I kind of wish one of the hands had the peg to peg it in there. That would have been awesome. But it's just a silver power sword. And you get the blade blaster weapon as well. It's all white. Again, it has the hole. Again, really wish it had a hand to hold it. It kind of sort of fits in the holster, but it's a little bit too big. But what I love most is that it hits my nostalgia right there. That is a cool update. That's a nice little throwback on top of just being fun. That's a fun addition to it. And on top of all that, you get all the Green Ranger gear to then put on your Red Ranger. So you get the Dragon Shield, which has a nice gold to it. You're going to pop the arms off. You're going to pop the head off. And that's how you slip it on. You also get extra arms with the gold bands on it. Simply just pull the Ranger arms out. Pop these in. Easy peasy. Nothing loose. And you get the Dragon Dagger with the black holster. Now, right here, I thought I broke this, right? And it looks like it broke. But as I'm being told, is that it was purposely cut by Super 7 so that you can pull out the Dragon Dagger, right? Which, okay. And also, I've grown up with all kinds of toys having these little holsters with parts and pieces that move so you can 
get it in, get it out easily, right? So it works, totally looks cool. I don't really like that they cut that, to be honest with you. And if you notice, it has a peg hole right there for the Red Ranger belt. Now the Dragon Dagger is really nicely done. It's painted beautifully. It's got gold, it's got green. That is a miniaturized version of the Dragon Dagger. With the actual Red Ranger himself, from afar, let me just put it to you this way. If you don't ever look at this figure or go really, really up close and start picking it apart, you know what I mean? You'd go, yeah, that's a that's a darn good looking Red Ranger, right? Which I wish I could still do. But then you have to do this type of video and look at it all up close, right? And then you start to see the various imperfections. And that's where the $55 price point comes in and you have to go, 55 bucks, I don't really want all these marks and the sloppage and the whites right here. And you got like a thumbprint and you got some digs and some shredding and you got some stress marks right here on the front. See, the front is the problem, right? That's always the first thing you see. So stress marks, not very cool. With some of the stress marks, even being on the backside, right? Same type of area where the joint meets. And with the legs, when you start moving them around, you will get some paint fleckage because they paint the joints. Now, overall, there are some problems and that would be QC issues to me. First and foremost, because not every Red Ranger is going to have those issues. But those are the ones that mine has. The reds, the whites, the helmets, everything looks pretty good. All the lines on mine are crisp, so I can definitely appreciate that. There's no huge problems in that situation. The helmet looks very accurate as far as I can tell and from what I think. It's like a Darth Vader situation between movies. Yeah, that's the Red Ranger helmet to me. But... When it comes to the arms and moving them around, even though I have said in the past, I'm not a huge stickler for articulation, does it do all the articulation that a Red Ranger would expect? Now, it is ratcheted in the arms, which is good, but then it's kind of hard to move him around sometimes in a more naturalistic pose. If you want to put it between notches, ultimately it falls into the notch, right? The bicep swivel, the single jointed elbows, doesn't bother me. Then you have the wrist articulation as well. However, when you start to move the wrists, and this is what I found to be the biggest problem, is that the wrist joints will eventually become loose. So when you want to use, let's say, a heavier weapon like the power sword, it starts to move around on you. Now, on the belts to the midsection to the ab crunch, I don't think that looks the greatest, to be honest. The belt is painted nicely. You got the morpher, you got the holster, you have the peg right there for the dragon dagger. The line work is nice and crisp. That's good. Then you have this crotch pocket diaper situation, right? That's about as high as you're going to be able to get the legs on this guy. It's very minimalistic, and you have to think, okay, for the Power Rangers, they are martial arts masters. They get in all kinds of crazy poses and they're going to beat up monsters. I could be able to kick all that high, unfortunately, right? No M appeal action going on there. That's something, even though I say I'm not a huge stickler for articulation, I really wish you could get a little bit more movement out of that. The knees are fine. I like the spin on the knee, single jointed. The boots will rotate. The feet are nice. They go up, they go down. They have that detail along with the black on the bottom of the feet. So again, from afar, I like the streamlined nature of this figure. He's not overly articulated, but in some senses, I wish that they were just a little bit more articulated with the articulation that it has. And I hope that that makes the most sense out of everything, right? Now, to give you an idea of swapping parts and pieces out for the dragon shield, the arms come out just like that, the head pops off, no problems whatsoever. You go ahead and slip the dragon dagger on, you get the arms in there, make sure you got the right arms for the right sides, you got the helmet on, you put the dragon dagger right there on the side of his belt, and it looks pretty cool, right? Even though when you try to move the legs, it's going to kick out and hit the dragon dagger. And yeah, it's going to pop off. So that is just something to keep an eye out for. Is it going to break anything? No. Is it cumbersome? Yeah, most definitely. But again, in talking about the articulation, when you have this type of character with a dragon dagger, wouldn't it be great to put the dragon dagger to the mask and be able to play the tune? No, you can't even get 
to that point with the articulation. However, in posing him out, I think that that looks good. And in holding the power sword and he's the Red Ranger on your shelf, it does accomplish that. And just to show you the scaleture between Ranger, Evil Space Alien, and Zord. I think the Zords match up to the Evil Space Aliens pretty good. The Evil Space Aliens are a little bit too much taller, let's say, than the Rangers. But I would expect a little bit bigger monster, right? It is a man in a suit, but you get the idea. Previously released, let's say, Megazords or just the Tyrannosaur Zord from Bandai and Hasbro. Unfortunately, I would say these are too big to still go with Super 7's Evil Space Aliens. So I don't think they match up all too well. In looking at what's come before, now, one of my favorites from Bandai was always this version of King Sphinx. It's minimal as heck, but I loves it. And it achieves that look of King Sphinx, especially for being an old-fashioned vintage toy now. When you move into Hasbro, with all the recent advancements, it does have pinless joints, but there is no paint on this guy. Yeah, it does have a decent sculpt, but in looking at what Super 7 has accomplished now with their King Sphinx, there's a lot of probs. And if you look at what has come before with Bandai to now Hasbro, I really do feel like they missed the mark because this is the gold standard right here. This has brought out detail that I really never even paid attention to nor saw in artwork for all the games, all the toys, and everything else. Super 7 nailed this King Sphinx through and through. Now, to say that, yes, it has loose joints, keep that in mind, of course, when buying also. But from what Bandai had done to now what Hasbro had done to now Super 7, Super 7 is the clear winner. Now, when it comes to the Red Rangers and seeing what's come before and what we got now, I'll say this all day, every day. The Bandai Fliphead Power Rangers are my favorite. As inaccurate as you want to say they are and as yellow as mine has become, it's still amazing. Love it. Now, Hasbro even made their versions of the Fliphead Rangers for a Walmart exclusive line. There's a lot of issues. Even though you don't have to fix it each time you want to flip it, that's a nice little feature, but he's so dang blocky. It's just weird at this point, but it is a toy, right, at the end of the day. Now, one of my most recent favorites has been the Power Rangers VHS line that Walmart did, and to me, this is a great revisit for updating the Fliphead Rangers, but making them more as action figures. It has those original looking weapons. It's just very cool to me and I appreciate it for what it is. I also appreciate the price. Now, you have the Lightning Collection Red Ranger, and when these first came out, it was something new, and I have to say that I saw some immediate problems. There's problems with the helmet. He kind of looks like a guy in a Red Ranger suit, but the suit doesn't quite fit him properly, right? So, a lot of articulation, great price point for what it is, now it's like, yeah, it's okay. The legacy Bandai Power Rangers were very fun at the time, especially for getting back into Power Rangers for when these came out. Yeah, they're goofy looking, but through and through, it's definitely a toy, and I appreciate it for what it is. It's goofy, but it matches my love of the Power Rangers, oddly enough, but yes, it's wildly inaccurate. Now you have the Super 7 Power Ranger Red Ranger, and... Again, of all the points that we've gone over, the biggest problems have to do with the weapons fitting. And then you have some paint problems as well. But in standing there, that looks like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Zeo Ranger out of all of these, right? That just looks the best, but it has its issues. And then, of course, you have the original giant Bandai Red Ranger, which also has its wild inaccuracies. Also has the Dino Coin logo right there on the chest. So... Through and through of all my Red Rangers, I got a nice selection, but I have to say the Super 7 one is looking the best so far. Now, if you have stayed throughout this entire video, first of all, thank you very much, but I got to do a little bit of an Entertainment Earth spiel. This is where I picked up my Mighty Morphin Power Ranger figures, because again, I've been wanting to check this line out. So all you got to do is head over to Entertainment Earth, you type in Super 7 MMPR Ultimates or Power Rangers, and it'll pop up all these figures. And by the way, they've announced a new wave, which has bulk and skull. So I'm definitely on it for those. But you get Green Ranger, you can get Putty Patrollers, Goldar, heck, you might even be able to score a deal. 
4674 outlet deal that's not too shabby it's a lot better than paying 55 bucks i will tell you that but i haven't checked those out yet but I do have plans in the future, along with the Putty Patroller. But in looking at the prices for these figures, and looking at these two figures for the video, I will recommend King Sphinx all day. Red Ranger, I will tell you, probably wait for a little bit of a sale, right? Because I think that that will be in your best interest to save some cash. But if you don't like what Super 7 is doing, perhaps you're more of a fan of what Hasbro is doing, you can get their Power Rangers Lightning Collection remastered figures and... I haven't checked those out myself, but if they're anything like the original Lightning Collection releases, they're going to have their issues as well. Heck, you could even check out Fig Zero and their 1-6 scale if you want to go a little bit larger, but it is going to be a little bit more expensive. And if you use any of my links down in the description below, it will give you 10% off for all in-stock items. If it's a pre-order, it doesn't work. It has to be in stock. Also, for orders over 79 bucks, you will get free shippings as well. So, I highly recommend Entertainment Earth. I use them myself. Definitely check them out. Guarantee you'll find something there that you like. So, that's going to wrap it up for my look at two of the brand new Super 7 MMPR Ultimates, the Red Ranger and King Sphinx figures. And I hope that this truly does aid you in all your future figure purchasing needs. I'm a huge fan of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the first and second seasons. I like that lore. I like the whole monster of the week, Zords. Zordon sends the Rangers out. They defeat the problem, and you're done. Gets too serious, start thinking about it too much. It makes no goddamn sense, and you know it. Where does the sword come from? How does the volcano erupt every single time the Zord comes out, right? Stop. It makes no sense. It's goofy. It's wackadoo. But that's why I loves it for that, right? And for these figures, like I said, have some fun with them. They do have their problems here and there. But that King Sphinx with that back end hanging out, woo, that's some choice evil space alien nonsense, right? So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember... Have some fun with your toys. Don't take this too seriously, and uh, hopefully you enjoy what you purchase. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.